Let's track. Hi there, a few months ago I looked at a few games I described as forgotten sequels, meaning games that you might think are more of the same old stuff, but are actually played and structured differently from their predecessors. Examples of this would be Super Adventure Island, which is pretty much just a one-note platformer, and Super Adventure Island 2, a more adventure-style game, complete with an open-world map with equipable weapons and armor. I want to take that same idea for a video and expand it to the Super Famicom, so here's a list of games released in North America that received sequels that were only for the Super Famicom. And yes, I realize that I've talked about many of these games many times in the past, so there might not be that much new stuff here for some of you, but I'll try and throw in a few games here and there that I haven't talked about before. The main point though is just to highlight games you might have enjoyed back in the day and never realized received a sequel. A great example of this is The Legend of the Mystical Ninja, a co-op platformer with a ton of variety in both the level design and the game structure. It's one of the best games Konami made for the Super Nintendo, and that's saying something. The series continued on the Super Famicom with three more games, including a few oddball side series games featuring the game's protagonist, Goemon. The main series, though, is really good, and are some of the best 16-bit games to never leave Japan. Each game takes the ideas present in the first game and expands on them big time. Yeah, there's a lot you'll have to skip unless you can read Japanese, and there's no English patches available for any of these games yet. But yeah, the Legend of the Mystical Ninja Japan-only sequels feature more playable characters, more game modes like this fighting mode here, and I'm not even sure what to call this, more craziness and more creativity. If I had to pick one game, it would be the fourth one, Ganbare Goemon Kirakira Doshu Boku ga Dancer ni Nata Wake. It's the most polished game of the three, the level design is inventive, and the extra game modes are a lot of fun. Here's an NES game that received a sequel on the SNES in Do Re Mi Fantasy. Yeah, this one's actually a sequel to Mylon's Secret Castle, and while that game uh, may not be the best, Do Re Mi Fantasy is a fantastic platformer. The level design here is nuts, where you're inside a cake with knives coming at you, you're blasting through walls. Yeah, your attack is blowing bubbles, but this game is more about pure platforming rather than defeating enemies. This is a really good game that deserves more attention. There's a couple Tetris games on Super Famicom that never made it anywhere else, like Super Tetris 3, which is 4-player compatible and features all sorts of twists on the usual Tetris formula, like using bombs to create chain reactions that negatively affect your opponent. There's also Tetris Battle Gaiden, which is more of a puzzle fighter type game, with the gameplay being closer to something like Puyo Puyo. You can't go wrong with either of these games if you're looking for some good versus multiplayer games. The same could be said for Super Bomberman 4 and 5. The first two Super Bomberman games were released in North America, the third only made it as far as PAL regions, but the fourth and fifth games stayed in Japan. Super Bomberman 4 is crazy, featuring Louis you can ride around that kick bombs from across the map. There's the Mad Bomber mode, where if you're eliminated you can hang out on the side of the map and still cause chaos. There's a map editing mode. This game is nuts. Super Bomberman 5 has more of the same, plus you can create your own character. Both these games support up to four players as well, although if you want to play a single player mode, I think the fifth game has the best single player mode out of any of them, so there's that too. Either way, you can't go wrong with the Super Bomberman series. Both 4 and 5 are fantastic. Mickey's Magical Quest is a solid Capcom Disney platformer, and that was followed by The Great Circus Mystery starring Mickey and Minnie, but there was a third game in the series for the Super Famicom called Mickey to Donald Magical Adventure 3. It follows the same kind of format as the first game, but allows for two-player co-op. There's four different outfits here, like the knight armor for example, or in Donald's case, a barrel and a bowl for a helmet. This is a fun one that exudes a lot of personality. It was eventually released in North America on Game Boy Advance in 2003, so it's available there as well. Here's a little more of an obscure one. Super Bonk got a sequel that never left Japan titled Super Genjin 2 or Super Bonk 2, and I'd call this the better of the two games, featuring some interesting level design that fits all of Bonk's bizarre power-ups really well. The sprite animations here are great too. So if you want to get into the Bonk series but you don't have a TurboGrafx-16, then not only is there Super Bonk, but Super Bonk 2 for the Super Famicom as well. There's a few RPGs that got Japan-only sequels. Bear in mind, to play these, you'll need an English patch, and you can obtain each patch at romhacking.net. Let's start with Brandish, which, let's be honest, is a pretty crappy game. It's just really disorienting and not very intuitive. Brandish 2 for Super Famicom, to its credit, at least polishes the game a bit more, even if it does keep that weird hybrid overhead dungeon crawler perspective. These games can be tough to get into, but Brandish 2 does at least have an on-screen map, more varied dungeon design, and a halfway interesting story, so if this looks interesting to you, go check it out. 
A few weeks ago I looked at Paladin's Quest, a not so well known JRPG that's one of the strangest looking games you'll ever see, but it's a perfectly okay game. It received a Japan only sequel titled Lennis 2, and again it takes everything from Paladin's Quest and polishes it up and just makes it a more palatable experience overall. They keep the battle system mostly intact, where there's no MP and you use HP to use magic. You can recruit all sorts of other party members, and the story is cleverly told where you're not quite sure what you've gotten yourself into until a big reveal halfway through the game. Lennis 2 is a pretty good game that's been kind of lost in the shuffle over the years. Remember Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen? That received a sequel on Super Famicom 2 called Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together. This is a classic strategy RPG and looks and plays like a prototype of Final Fantasy Tactics and it might be the best true sequel on this list because it takes everything March of the Black Queen did and makes it that much better. Of course, I have to mention Seiken Densetsu 3, the sequel to Secret of Mana that unfortunately still has not been released anywhere other than Japan despite a reliable and consistently updated English patch. I've blathered on about this game a ton over the years, so I'll just say if you liked Secret of Mana and you somehow haven't heard of or played this game at this point, you won't be disappointed. It features the same strength Secret of Mana had, like a fantastic colorful visual style and a memorable soundtrack, and of course the badass top-down combat system, but with more of a polished hit detection and no more of that whole the button down for a longer attack nonsense. This is a great game and one of the best 16-bit games to never leave Japan. Last but not least, I have a few Satellaview broadcasts here. The Satellaview was a satellite modem attachment to the Super Famicom that could receive broadcasts that sent playable games to your console, and you can only play the games during the hours these broadcasts were made available. I'm not going to get too far into the nuts and bolts of how that works because that's just opening a huge can of worms, so I'll just say there were some interesting games, so to speak, that were broadcast at that time that are now available to be played in ROM form. One of these Satellaview releases was for F-Zero, called BS F-Zero Grand Prix 2, the BS standing for Broadcast Satellite. The first Grand Prix title was just the original game with new tracks added, but Grand Prix 2 is just the new tracks in addition to four new racers to choose from. So yeah, if you just want more F-Zero, more tracks, and more jet-powered cars, then here you go. The Zelda series also received a few Satellaview titles, the first of which being BS Legend of Zelda. And this is like if the original Legend of Zelda got an SNES remix, so to speak. It's the same kind of presentation, the same gameplay, but with a visual overhaul. As far as I know, this isn't what the original broadcast was like, and it's since been revamped a bit when it was transferred into a ROM format. But still, this is like the third quest for Legend of Zelda, which is pretty cool to have if you played the first two quests to death. Later on, there was also another map made for this format, simply titled Zelda no Den Setsu Map 2. There was also a second quest, in a manner of speaking, made available for A Link to the Past, titled BS The Legend of Zelda Ancient Stone Tablets. Again, it's the same gameplay, but entirely new dungeons, in addition to a new story as well that takes place after the events of Link to the Past. You don't actually play as Link though, instead you play it as the Satellaview avatar you would have created for yourself at the time, so it's a little goofy. The game structure here is geared toward how the Satellaview had to present things, meaning the game was only available to be played during the broadcast, which was usually only an hour long. So most of the dungeons here are timed, so it's a little weird. Still, again, if you just want more Link to the Past, then here you go. Okay, that's it for now. Yeah, I know there's a lot more Satellaview stuff, but I myself am just at the tip of the iceberg there, so leave a comment if there's more Satellaview stuff other people may not know about. And I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.